What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the KO diecast version of MP56 Trailbreaker. So this was sent to me by none other than Dr. Diecast. It's just kind of funny because it is made of diecast. And I was kind of surprised that it came in a box like this. Most of the KOs, they don't really care. But this one they removed. It's basically the same style packaging but they've removed all the images. And just for reference, here's the original package. So they just took away everything. But it is a KO, of course. Um, and I wanted to check this out just to see, you know, how much improved, if any, this was over the official version. So, of course, we're going to bring in the official version here. And this is going to be more of a comparison review than anything. Not really a full blown review because we've already done the review on MP56. We're not going to show the transformation here. But let's take a look and compare these two. Um, starting off, the hood is actually die-cast on this version. Um, it still has the opening effect, but it's you know really a solid piece of die-cast, painted nicely. This one is also painted, but um, not made of die-cast, made of plastic. The paint color itself is very close, very similar, uh, but there are some slight differences in how, especially on back here, how that paint looks, but it's very close. Very close. All the molding seems to be the same. It still says Toyota. Still have painted rear tail lights. Still have all the markings that you would expect um, from this figure. You do get some effects here for the vehicle mode. So if you push down on this, you can lift up this piece. I did notice this piece is actually a little bit tough to get folded. You have to kind of push it a little bit harder than this one. This one folds very smoothly. And that will allow you to take the little radar dish here and you can plug that in here. Let's see, does this fit? Should fit. There we go. And you can rotate this. It does have the basically exactly the same as the official, I don't really see any differences. It's got the chrome, it's got the black hose there. So pretty much identical. Um, this one goes in a little bit easier, but pretty much identical. So I don't see any differences there. Uh, it also comes with the animation bumper. And these look very similar um, this review, by the way, is giving me nostalgia. But So my channel, I actually started by looking at KOs and comparing them to the official Takara product. So this is very much like that, the old reviews I used to do. Anyway, um, they look very, very similar. Not too much differences. This one's a little bit darker. It's got a little bit more of a wash on it. All right, and there it is next to the official. No real difference there. Pretty much the same. Obviously, we don't have the Autobot logo there. But they did give you these stickers, so if you wanted to put them on, this is not my figure, so I'm not going to do it, but they gave you these Autobot logos, a little bit bigger. This one looks like it's pretty much the same size or similar, or they have the smaller ones, which we can use. So you can make it look, I don't even know why, just put it on at that point. <laughs> You're putting it in the box anyway. Everything else works the same, the doors do open. You can Pull those open and there's a little bit of a cockpit, not really, or a interior. Um, but that's pretty much the same on both. I don't see any differences there. So let's get this guy transformed into his robot mode. Since we've done it before on this channel and I did a pretty good transformation video, there's really no reason to do it here again. So we'll get him transformed off camera and be right back. All right, and there he is in robot mode. Uh, it does actually look pretty good with that toy head. It was actually on there when I transformed it. It is on a ball joint, but I actually am having trouble getting it off, so I'm probably going to leave this on for the remainder of the review, but it does come with the other heads. I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, there are some issues with the mold here. Um, they got some things you know, off a little bit, so I want to describe that right away. So one of the things is this backpack is supposed to plug in. There's two tabs, and you can see one tab is sticking out. And the way they made it, you can only t plug in one or the other. So you can either plug in that one and not this one, or this one and not that one. I'll just show you. If I plug unplug it and I plug in that side, this side won't go in. So something's up with that. 
The other thing that's mismolded, and I'll open this up, and unfortunately I have to kind of untransform it to show you. So we'll take these doors out. And this panel here on the inside was super duper tight and also kind of mismolded. We'll get these um, wheels out of the way, but I couldn't get this to go downwards right here. That has to go down, and it's much, much easier on the, the original. This one, for whatever reason, it's very, very tight. Um, I was thinking maybe it's die cast or something, but it's just a thicker plastic that's you know, not molded quite right. I do see a little bit of white there on the bottom, which means you know there's a little bit of stress there. Um, so I didn't want to push it too hard, but it was a KO, so I figured if I do break it, I can replace it for Dr. Diecast. But um, you do have to really get that down, otherwise this will not transform because these wheels have to sit in here. And if you don't have this folded down, those wheels can't sit like that. Uh, then you take the doors and those tab into here. Um, that and that works fine. It's just that that front panel doesn't want to sit properly, so you have to kind of force it down. Uh, and then these are supposed to pop through here on the top. Those are also just due to this misshapen piece on the bottom here. They don't necessarily you know fit perfectly. So that backpack does kind of pop off a little bit on its own. If you're messing with him, you can have that backpack popping off. Let's put this back on here. Uh, that does work the same way, just you slide it down for the transformation. All right, let's go over the articulation. Uh, and I actually want to talk about the hands when we get to there because um, they're a little bit loose on this copy. But starting with the uh, shoulder cannons, they have a pin here and here. So you can rotate it all the way back and this can go up and down. Um, these are a little bit tighter than the original, so that's nice because they hold the position that you want. Heads on a ball joint, rotates around, goes up to there, down to there, a little bit side to side, and it rotates. Um, the neck joint also will move back and forth. And like I mentioned, I am having trouble replacing that head joint, or the, the head overall. Shoulders rotate around on this joint. They'll go up on this joint, but they did fix this. So on the original, this was locked in place just through the way it was molded. On this one, they've allowed it. So you get that extra movement. So you're getting a ratchet here, and then you're getting this movement here on a, fr a friction joint. So you do get the extra rotation. Now you could do this one, you could break it free. T-Man978 showed it in his review. You can actually break it free. I still haven't been brave enough to try to do it. It just feels like you're breaking your figure, but you can do that. Continuing down your rotation at the bicep. So you can do it at the elbow, but it gets you the full bend. Rotation at the wrist. The wrist itself is very loose. And actually another issue, another kind of tolerance thing is this. You can see it was stuck. It's supposed to stay attached to this, but it actually you know, just pops off very easily. This part is very loose. It works fine once you close it. It doesn't pop off, but this rotation is loose. Uh, the fingers are individually articulated. You can't open them up. Actually, sorry, the pointer fingers are individually articulated, but the other three are connected, and the thumb is on this swivel. Not my favorite hands at all, <laughs> but it is the same as the original. Rotation here, ab crunch. It gets you down to there. Just want to make sure. Is that the same? Yeah, that's the same. It looks like they made it ratcheted instead of just friction. This has some kind of ratchet in there. Soft ratchet. Legs will go up to there. The hip skirt moves with it. Back to there. Up to the side, there's a hip skirt here. Uh, you do have new die cast parts in the legs. So what's die cast that wasn't? Actually, there's no die cast on the original. On the new one, this entire red piece you see here is painted die cast. Uh, I believe it's 100% die cast. It might be just this inner part, but I can feel the weight. The top of this toe right here is all die cast, and then there's a die cast piece right here where the Toyota is. So you get some weight down low, which is nice because it gives it a little bit of better of a feel, and he plants a little bit better with that die cast. Uh, but continuing on with the articulation and rotation at the thigh, single judge and knee, but it gets you past 90 degrees. Ankle tilts, 
Uh, this is a little bit tighter than it is on the original, and you can, you know, articulate downwards, forward, backward, every direction, and a rotation. Uh, no rotation, but you get pretty much every direction you need there out of those ankles. Um, so I do feel like that is just due to the die cast, maybe, um, is a little bit tighter, but overall pretty much the same articulation with exception to this. As far as the accessories in robot mode, you get the exact same one. So you open this up, pull this hand out of here, and we can use this that I'll attach right here. So you can have that weapon. You can also, if you prefer this side to be hand, you can grab that side hand and replace it. And like I mentioned, these are very loose. They just don't sit well, but you can kind of swap and have it on the other side. You do get the blast effect here, and again, it is identical. Everything's identical pretty much to the original. And this will fit in here. So you do that, or in here. So you can do that. And we also get the alternate heads, and I'm not going to put these on because I'm having trouble getting this off the ball joint, but here's the three heads you get. You get the derpy <laughs> smiling face, you get the yelling face, and then you get kind of a half smiling face. They do look good. They're painted nicely. They got the metallic blue, but um, they're just, uh, they're on, they're, this head is on a ball joint, and I've had a hard time getting this one off the ball joint and I don't want to break it. I did you know, try but it didn't go. Uh, but once you replace that then you can just swap the faces on this piece. This piece doesn't have that sliding joint so you can't slide it off like you can on these. Uh, but that's really it for the accessories. All pretty much identical to the original. Everything is basically exactly as it was on this one. So final recommendations on the KO diecast version of MP56 Trailbreaker. I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5. I'm going to give it a partial recommendation. Um, I do really like the toy head. I think they nailed it with that look. I don't know if they copied it or it's their own, but it does look nice. I do like the added diecast in the knees and the feet. It definitely gives it a little bit more of a premium feel. Also helps him to stand a little bit better because he plants better with those the weight down below. All the other accessories are pretty much the same. Everything works the same. There's nothing new to talk about here in terms of accessories other than the head. Um, but where this figure has issues is just fit and finish, which is to be expected with a KO. Um, there's, there's multiple issues here. So one, I actually didn't even mention it. There's a scratch right here across the windshield. Dr. Diecast mentioned that it came like that. So that's the kind of stuff you could expect. Um, luckily, you know, the painted surface here the diecast uh, uh, hood isn't scratched up. That actually looks pretty good. The diecast feet and legs work pretty well, um, and they're painted okay, but just some scratches. Uh, the other thing is the mismolding of the backpack here. That might be a results may vary thing, but I would imagine that you're going to have a lot of those just because, you know, the mold is you know reverse engineered. And then also this piece here, you know, I kind of forced it. I think some people won't necessarily want to force it. And therefore you won't be able to transform it properly. Um, but I luckily didn't break it doing that. But I'm guessing some people might break it trying to get that moving. So little fit and finish things like that kind of hold it back. But if you're looking for a relatively cheap version of MP56, and you like the die cast and the new toy head, then this is definitely a good pickup. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Dr. Diecast for sending this for review. We'll see you next time.